Hello everyone. So today we came up with a topic which is the double hooks joint. So what is this double hooks joint? And uh, actually, why do we need this double hooks joint? So that is a very good question. So before double hooks joint, we studied about hooks joint, right? Hooks joint, or it is even called as universal joint. Fine. So here, what what was happening was there were two shafts, right? So shaft number one, and then shaft number two. So let's let's draw this. So for for instance, the shaft number one is having, it has forks, right? You know about the forks, right? So this fork was of shaft number one, and this is of shaft number two. They were perpendicular to each other, and actually the shaft was connected. Okay, let's say this is the shaft. and this shaft number 1 was connected to this fork right and these shafts were making a certain angle with each other they were not fixed in a straight manner they were making the shafts were making some angle with each other if you calculate that angle of shafts it was you named it as alpha and this is let's call shaft number 1 and this is shaft number 2 and this is input shaft with angular velocity omega 1 output shaft with angular velocity omega 2 input shaft is called a driver and output shaft is called driven fine so now here usually what would what would happen is for constant input it means for constant omega 1 constant angular velocity you got a variable omega 2 omega 2 was not constant it was variable variable means it was not having a single value of omega it means sometimes the speed is very high sometimes the speed of rotation is very low sometimes the speed of rotation was equal to the omega one so these were different 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 ways omega two would rotate is that type of motion desirable i don't think so right we want a proper constant output for a constant input so that is our desirable motion so for that reason we started like double hooks joint so that's why we developed double hooks joint if you if you wish to check we have the derivation in the previous videos of single hooks joint or normal hooks joint where i have clearly defined what omega 1 is what omega 2 is when is omega 1 equal to omega 2 if you check a, a hooks joint a second video like i have created in four parts where the first part i discussed about basic derivation and the second part I discussed about uh, when is omega 1 equal to omega 2 and when is the ratio maximum when is the ratio minimum so all these things were discussed in the previous video fine so right now we are going to check into double hooks joint here in double hooks joint it's not difficult to understand double hooks joint has an intermediate shaft okay an intermediate shaft in previous case what happened you give input constant you got output variable right yes for a hooks joint so here you just check what what i'm going to do what we are going to do is i am going to draw the axis of this shaft let's say this is the axis fine sorry this is a fork we call it forks okay and this is another fork so let's give it a little distance and the first fork will be connected to the first shaft and let's say that yes this is your intermediate shaft here and the first fork should be connected to the first sha first uh, shaft right so let's say that the fork of uh, the first shaft is something like this fine and the fork of second shaft also is similar to the first shaft okay this is the fork and they are at actually 90 degrees with the pink uh, with the intermediate shaft fork okay just see that they are at uh 90 degrees let me draw a proper line i think that will be good <clears throat> yes so the inclination also should be same of both the forks this side and that side okay which are connecting first and second shafts yeah they look almost parallel now we'll get into the shaft case so this is your second shaft and let's say that this is making some angle with the intermediate shaft 
fine and here this is your third shaft and this is also making an angle here right so now we are going to make a study see here this is 90 degrees remember that it is 90 degrees here and here also it is 90 degrees now you can see that both the forks of the intermediate shaft are in the same plane right both the forks of the intermediate shaft it means this is also vertical that is also vertical so forks of the intermediate shaft are in the same plane so this is inter immediate shaft and the first one i am saying this is driving shaft driving or driver and this is a driven driven shaft fine and uh, the angle made by this intermediate shaft with both driver and driven if you are going to check this angle will be alpha this will make alpha they have to make similar angle okay they have to be at the same inclination the inclination cannot be tampered with okay they have to have same inclination and now let's say that let's say that, let's say that uh, we'll give names to the shafts right proper names like let's not say just one two and three let's give it a different name let me say that this is shaft a the driver i'll put it with some other color right yes driver is a fine and uh, driven is b shaft b and intermediate is shaft c okay and let's say that i rotated a driver with an angle theta see before you understand double hooks you have to understand single hook joint or hooks joint so go to that video if you don't understand from here i'm just going to continue from that video fine so now let's say that driver is rotated for an angle theta it means theta is the rotation of driver fine and uh, let's say that uh, phi gamma sorry gamma is the rotation of intermediate shaft of inter immediate shaft fine and phi is rotation of driven shaft or i can write clearly here so it is rotation of driver means it is rotation of a right so this is rotation of intermediate means rotation of c and uh, rotation of uh, driven means it is rotation of b these are the shaft names right now we'll get further if you checked in the previous uh, lecture which i have already taken so there you had uh, the ratio omega to by omega one you had some formula where theta and alpha is mentioned it means as theta is varying omega to by omega one which means the ratio of that angular velocity was varying fine so now here the we will take the first part of derivation from there and i'm i'm taking now the for shaft a and b a and c i'm writing the equation directly which is taken from the previous video which is for this case i can write tan theta it is rotation of driver it means rotation of a is equal to cos alpha into tan gamma because the gamma is the rotation of c okay let's name it equation number 1 now i will take for b and c b and c okay for shaft b and c what can i say b and c it means you have to look from b whenever you are looking from a and c which is the main shaft driving so here the main shaft is driven so look from the driven i can write tan what is the angle rotated by driven phi is equal to cos alpha tan gamma okay if you are getting any doubts of how did i write this equations you can go to the first video which i created on hooks joint and check it out okay so let me repeat the same thing on this page that equation so that we can easily understand what's going on here we had as first equation tan theta is equal to 
cos alpha and tan gamma that was the first equation then we had tan phi is equal to cos alpha tan gamma so from 1 and 2 i i i think that you can easily see what's happening here is if you equate 1 and 2 you will get theta is equal to phi everything gets cancelled out and if you differentiate it you get d theta by dt is equal to d phi by dt the meaning is the angular velocity of shaft a is equal to angular velocity of shaft b it means input and output are having same angular velocity it's a good news right earlier we didn't have same angular velocity see if input was going with the 100 rpm and output was at angle alpha output shaft so what happened is sometimes you got the angular velocity here as 50 sometimes you got it at 100 sometimes you got it as even <clears throat> as low as 60 sometimes you even got as 10 it means the angular velocity was varying in the previous case but here i am saying that due to us having an intermediate shaft and with the same angle t alpha here so we got constant angular velocity it means whatever input you are giving the same angular velocity you are getting in output without any variation so this is a good news but there is a condition now so this is good if you are using the forks to be in the same plane it means here also it is vertical here also vertical intermediate shaft forks are in the same plane if the forks are changing the plane it means for example this is one fork and this is another fork it means if they are perpendicular to each other it is vertical it is horizontal if the forks are in this way of the intermediate shaft then what is going to happen then you will have variation in output speeds even if you use the double hooks joint fine how will the variation be so now condition if the forks of inter of shaft 3 shaft c let me write shaft c okay lie in perpendicular planes to each other fine then you will have variation of speeds variation of speeds of driven shaft and it will be in this way we have already seen previously right in the first case in hooks joint you had what uh, omega 2 by omega 1 if, if you want it to be minimum then you said it is equal to cos alpha right and uh, you had omega 2 by omega 1 is equal to 1 by cos alpha it was maximum variation right so minimum variation maximum variation similarly we are going to write down it is between shaft a b sorry a b and c right c is intermediate a is uh, input b is output so we are going to write omega c by omega a omega c by omega a is equal to cos alpha it is minimum this is for minimum variation this is a special case right and you will have here you have total three right so similarly you can write omega uh, omega b by omega c yes omega b by omega c is equal to cos alpha both are for minimum right so now from this both equations i can just multiply them and cancel out omega c and finally i can write omega b by omega a it means output to input minimum is equal to cos square alpha so minimum variation you will get minimum angular velocity variation you will get from this formula and then maximum similarly you do for maximum you are going to get the formula like omega c by omega a for maximum variation is equal to 1 by cos alpha comma omega b by omega c maximum is equal to 1 by cos alpha so both multiply them both you will get omega b by omega a maximum variation if minimum and maximum are asked you have to do it in this manner so you have both the equations right fine you have both the equations this is one equation for minimum maximum this is one equation for minimum variation of speed if what is the condition here if you check the condition is 
if the forks of shaft c it means intermediate shaft are in perpendicular planes but here they are not in perpendicular planes they are in the same plane okay perpendicular plane means i just now i explained right so your screen is this this line is in your screen but if you imagine this coming out of the screen so it is in perpendicular plane right so if the fork ends are like this and if they are then connected to two shafts with even this way okay with which our earlier way like this shaft one this and shaft two this okay this is not there fine even that way it is not going to give the same angular velocity the angular velocity will vary how will it vary it will vary in this manner okay omega b by omega I minimum is this cos square alpha omega b by omega I maximum is 1 by cos square alpha and if you if if it if the forks of the intermediate shaft are on the same plane then you will have omega 1 equal to omega 2 or omega a equal to omega b fine so this is proved over here fine this says that omega a is equal to omega b fine so this is about double hooks joint if you are not understanding about this cos alpha and 1 by cos alpha these were already explained in the previous videos of hooks joint please complete them come back you will clearly understand each and every point thank you see you in the next video hope you enjoyed kindly subscribe to the channel and do comment in the comment sections